Good morning. Uh, wow. <laughs> uh, thanks for stopping by our, um, our booth today. I'm Marty Marseille. Uh, I'm with Intel. And uh, I'm part of um, a group, uh, I like to think of myself as an evangelist of technology. And I have the pleasure of uh, presenting to you today on the uh, recently announced or launched uh, Intel Optane DC Persistent Memory. And uh, we've done a lot of work with, um, with partners like uh, Redis. So what I'd like to talk about today is uh, some of the work that we've done with Redis and to show a value prop how uh, you can benefit from this technology. What we're going to cover, well, well, what I'll cover is we're going to talk a little bit about what the technology is. You probably stopped by our booth and saw a little bit of intro to it, where if you went to a session earlier, you probably saw that uh, there was some discussion about the Optane persistent memory. We're going to talk about the different modes. There's a lot of flexibility with this technology. But then also we're going to talk about how we're, uh, from a Redis standpoint, the, the, the value prop that um, we're going to demonstrate to you. Um, and then also I've got a recorded demo just to show from a, um, from a total cost of ownership standpoint, we're, we're going to continue to, well, we're going to lower the cost of the, um, of the infrastructure, but also we're going to uh, keep the uh, SLAs uh, the same. So with that, here's a little bit about the technology. And this is really an innovative uh, step that Intel has taken. It's been in the development for years. But basically what we've done is that we've taken the Optane Media, which is readily available within our SSD family. But we did something unique with it. We saw an opportunity out there uh, around memory. So what, we do, what we've done is we've taken the Optane Media and we actually put it on a dim form factor. So what does that do for you? A couple of things. One is it gives you more memory capacity, a much lower cost, but it also gives you a lot higher or a lot larger capacity of memory, but it also provides a, um, a storage uh, environment, but at the, at the speed of DRAM, or at DRAM bus speed. So um, we've taken, uh, there again, we've taken advantage of that technology within this Redis environment. Let me talk a little bit more about, um, from a memory infrastructure standpoint, how this is uh, viewed from a processor standpoint. So if we look at the processor, we've got a uh, memory controller. And on that memory controller, we have channels. So um, in a typical, or in a uh, one socket system, we have uh, six channels, we have 12 slots. But what we can do is we kind of pair up this Optane persistent memory with DRAM. So we're, we're able to, there again, um, provide a much larger capacity of, uh, of memory. And the form factors that we uh, have you know, for, this, for these uh, modules are 128, 256, and 512. So you can see that with a capacity of 512 for a DIM, we can get much larger memory capacity within a given server. So that's really what we're taking advantage of. So what we're showing here is, so for a two, I mean, for a single socket system or per CPU, you can have up to three terabytes of main memory. So if we look at it from, um, you know, there again, some of the flexibility that we have with this technology, from an OS standpoint, it could just see it as main memory. So they're again taking advantage of that larger capacity of that dim form factor. So here we're, we're showing that um, we've got 256 gigabyte DRAM cache, um, and it's going to access one terabyte of main memory or memory. So we call this memory mode because what we're doing is we're actually using the uh, Optane persistent memory as just memory capacity, but we're using the DRAM as cache. So think of it as a fourth level of cache. And there's kind of the magic behind the controllers that are tiering the data so that, that way you're kind of masking the, um, to the OS what the, um, the tiering is, uh, is doing. And I'll, I'll, go, I'll show you a little bit more as far as how 
from a cache standpoint how it's treated in memory mode. So we're there again. In memory mode, the OS doesn't see, I mean, all it sees is the obtained persistent memory as capacity. Um, but it doesn't see the DRAM as memory because that is being used as cache, OK? But there's also another alternative or another mode. And this is where we're actually using this technology as storage. So we can either use it, we call this app direct mode. So we can use it as storage. So we can use it as a block device. So instead of writing out to SSD, which is slower over PCIe, type of bus. We can put it on there again because it's on that dim form factor. We can treat it as storage. So really there again, no change to your application because you're just setting uh, it up as just a regular volume. But there's another part of it. And this is really the, um, the key to this technology is now we can write to it as memory. So this is a byte level persistent memory. And this is where you get optimal performance. So instead of going through the, uh, the kernel for, uh, for the file system, you're actually writing directly to the technology or writing directly to that, uh, that DIMM. So you get an optimal performance. What I'm going to show you, though, is really from a, um, a memory standpoint, the memory mode, how we're using um, from a Redis standpoint, and the benefit that we're, we're able to give you from a, from a Redis uh, environment. So we're there again, from a Redis enterprise, you know, we're, we're there again, taking advantage of that caching layer, and then we're gonna use the persistent memory as total capacity. But there's a, there is another um, alternative you can use um, that in that app direct mode, you can use uh, the Reddish on Flash. So it's there, there again, instead of writing off to or accessing uh, SSD, you're actually uh, writing it to uh, the Optane persistent memory that's on that uh, DRAM. OK, so a little bit more about memory mode. Just to make it clear as far as you know, this is kind of the magic that's happening. And this is the flexibility that we have with this technology. And there again, as I mentioned, there's no changes to the application. The OS just sees it as memory. But what we have is we have the DRAM, which is really called the near memory. And then we have the Optane persistent memory that we're going to call far memory. But from, an, uh, from a controller standpoint, from memory controller, we're going to be managing how do we access that data. So you can see that in the, the optimal performance is when you just you treat it as near memory. If the, access, the data is in near memory, you're going to get the same uh, level of performance that you would, would with DRAM. So there again, what we're showing here is um, we're going to access the near memory as DRAM. And then, um, so that would be a cache hit. So there again, the data is resident on DRAM. This is OK. Performance is the same. But what happens if that data happens to be actually out on the Optane persistent memory? In that case, it would be a cache miss. And it would check, would first check in the, uh, the DRAM to see if the data is there. And it says, oh, it's not there. It's going to go to the memory controller and say, OK, where is it? And it's going to see that it's out on Optane Persistent, and it's at this location. And then it's going to be brought back in. So the key is that you know, this is the balance, because now we're going to give you a lot more capacity. But we also want to make sure from a performance standpoint that there's more hits than misses. So there's a ratio that we want to maintain. So you're still going to have a certain amount of DRAM. But there again, we're going to have a much larger capacity of, uh, of from, from a total memory standpoint. But the thing is, is that it's moving those older cache pages out into that far memory. So that way, you're freeing up that cache. So that way, you have optimal performance. So really, you know, what we're try driving here in this particular example is an improved total cost of ownership. Because if I can give you more memory capacity at a lower cost, that's going to be a benefit to your Redis environment. 
But the whole idea is that we do want to have an impact on this uh, SLA, on those service level agreements that you have. But also um, be able to uh, have memory, have higher memory capacity. So if we look at, you know, the kind of the typical, whoops, at the typical Redis environment, you know, what happens? You know, some of the customer pain points are, hey, you know, it's an in-memory database, it's a large in-memory database, and as the data con continues to grow, um, what happens is that the cost of main memory becomes a prohibitor, so then what happens? You start dividing that, those Redis um, instances up into smaller chunks. And that just makes it more complicated to manage in that environment. But if we can expand or extend the amount of uh, memory capacity that you have, then we can, there again, support a larger data set. So the whole idea is to come up with a solution that is going to support that single in-memory database, but provide you still with that sub-millisecond response, there again, to reduce the cost. So the, uh, there again, the value proposition is to, to maintain your SLA, but at a much lower hardware cost. Um, so there again, it's to accommodate the larger capacity of uh, those deployments, have fewer servers, um, but then also support those the real-time analytics so not having to uh, branch out into uh, other nodes or shards of Redis. Um, you know, here we're, we're showing that in a particular uh, environment, uh, with the additional capacity, and there again, maintaining that SLA. In this case, we're showing less than one millisecond uh, latency. So in a typical uh, environment, we'll say, you know, you've allocated 1.5 terabytes of DDR uh, memory. In that case, you, you needed 17 servers to support that workload. Well, with uh, the Optane Persistent Memory, because we can support a larger amount of uh, capacity, in this case, three terabytes, so we've doubled the amount of main memory capacity. So what is that, the benefit is that now, instead of running it on 17 servers, that workload is 17 servers, now we're only running it, we're running it on nine uh, servers. And there again, lowering the, uh, the total cost of ownership, lowering the operation expense, and giving you a benefit. So here, you know, what we're showing is, um, so if we were to take a look at a kind of a typical two-socket system, and, um, you know, we'll say that, you know, there's 1.5 terabytes uh, that is allocated in a two-socket system in a regular DDR4 uh, kind of uh, configuration, and that's with uh, 12, I mean, I'm sorry, 24, 128 gigabyte DRAM DIMMs. What we're showing is that we can reduce the cost significantly because we're going to take out some of those DIMMs, the DRAM DIMMs, and replace them with op Optane Persistent Memory and actually uh, provide the same level or the same capacity of much lower cost. So I'll, I'll go into a little bit more detail on that. So th there again, the whole premise from a total cost of ownership standpoint is we're going to maintain the same level of capacity because what we've done is, you know, on, on the left, we show that we have 1.5 terabytes of DRAM. So there again, that's 24, 128 gigabyte DIMMs, which is pretty cost, costly. But, but there again, you know, it's to maintain that one, one millisecond uh, opt per second from a workload standpoint. But on the right, what we're doing is we're going to take advantage of this technology because we're going to swap out half of those 128, actually, we're going to swap out the, um, the 128 gigabyte uh, DIMMs and then DDR DIMMs, and we're going to replace it with just 16 gigabyte, you know, it's 12, 16 um, DDR4 DIMMs, but then we're going to put in uh, the 128 gigabyte um, I'm sorry, 256 gigabyte um, Optane Persistent Memory. So we're lowering the cost because the uh, Optane Persistent Memory is going to give you higher capacity at much lower cost. So in this example, is a 43% cost savings. 
Okay. So one of the things what I want to show is, so by taking advantage of the, uh, the persistent memory, actually this is the DDR4 um, system. So this is showing kind of a before and after. And this is showing that uh, based on that SLA, keeping that one millisecond um, response time, we're driving ops per second up to uh, beyond two, but you're, you can see that from a latency standpoint, okay, it's below that one millisecond goal that we have. So that's in a total DDR4 kind of environment. So that meets the criteria. But there again, the whole goal is we want to replace the DDR4 memory. We want to put in the Optane persistent memory. So let's look at the same workload But what we're going to do is, there again, we're using the Optane persistent memory. So you can see we're still driving you know, the ops per second. Now, it was a little higher, but you know, to meet the SLA, we said it's one, milli I mean, uh, one million ops per second. And we're still driving it higher than that, but we're able to maintain our SLA. And we're staying below that one millisecond. Um, from a response time standpoint. So there again, this is showing that, you know, given that workload, that we can support that environment. So that's all, that's all goodness. And then what I'd like to show is, so what does that look like from a memory usage standpoint? We talked about memory mode and how it kind of pairs up the, uh, the uh, memory, the Optane persistent memory with DDR4. And actually what this is showing, and it's, I know it's a little hard to see, but you can see that the, um, the regular memory uh, and the Optane persistent memory are on the same uh, channel. And we see the DDRT is actually the Optane persistent memory. So we are from a, um, from a megabit per second, from a bandwidth perspective, uh, you can see that it's hitting the DRAM a little hot, a little heavier than the Optane persistent memory, but there again, it's showing that um, it is still accessing the Optane persistent memory, but because we're having all those uh, cache hits, we're able to maintain that performance. So from, a, um, from, a, from an SLA standpoint, we're meeting that objective. So there again, this is just showing that um, we're, we're optimizing that technology to give you that much larger capacity and maintain the, uh, the SLA for that, that environment. Okay. So, um, you know, there again, um, you know, th this is using the um, Optane Persistent Memory in memory mode to get, you know, there again, much, uh, maintain the SLA at a much lower cost. But um, you know, there's also Optane persistent memory that is used for Redis uh, open source, but then also um, in app direct mode. So you know, we, sh we looked at it earlier where it's using it as Flash, where um, you there's development that is done uh, using the app direct mode. Uh, so there again, at that byte level to give you optimal performance. So if you're looking to get optimal performance or lower, lower your total cost of, uh, of implementation or operation, then uh, the uh, Optane Persistent Memory is uh, it's just definitely a, a great technology in that environment. So um, I thank you uh, for stopping by and uh, hope you enjoy the rest of the, uh, the conference and appreciate your attention. Thank you.